My name is Alan Smithson. I'm going to be doing a quick keynote presentation for you guys today. And uh, I'm really excited. Investing in the new golden age. You know, we have, we have witnessed some of the most dynamic technology increases in the world in the last few years. And it's only getting better. My name is Alan Smithson. My personal mission is to inspire and educate future leaders to think and act in a socially, economically, and environmentally responsible way. And in doing so, I'm the founder and CEO of Unlimited Awesome, a new education system, which I'll talk about in a minute, and Six Ventures, our family office fund. I'm also the author, co-author of a book called 2030, A Blueprint for Humanity's Exponential Leap. I have copies at the back here that I'll be signing for you. If you uh, want a copy, please come up and see me after the presentation. Happy to do that. This book uh, explores all the different technologies from food to finance, from agriculture, uh, right across the spectrum of all the technologies that will impact humanity and society in the next five years. We are entering the most extraordinary period in human history. We're entering a golden age where technology is accelerating at an unimaginable pace. You're all familiar maybe with Moore's Law. Moore's Law for the last 50 years has remained consistent, meaning Moore's Law states that there's a performance doubling in technology every 18 months. But there's something new happening right now, and it's really exciting. So we're starting to see this new chip design. So you all know who this is, Jensen Wong, the CEO of NVIDIA. They've been seeing performance improvements of 1,000x in the last 10 years. So there's a new law. It's called Huang's Law, and the performance doubling is now every six months. And that's because AI is helping us design new chips, and new chips are helping us run better AI in this virtual cycle. So check this out. Semiconductors are at the foundation of AI performance. Now, this is, that's a human hair going across there. There you go. So this is really, really incredible. If you look at this. Oh, yeah. Wait for it. So you can see it's almost like a little city. This is a semiconductor. And this is what runs your phones, your tablets, your computers, your cars, your fridges, everything. Oh, wait for it. Oh, yeah. We're not finished yet. There you go. Oh, but wait, there's more. So the next time you look at your phone and you're like, wow, what's inside? <laughs> That's inside your phone. Pretty incredible stuff. All right, so with artificial intelligence, we have narrow AI, which is what we all have right now, ChatGPT, Perplexity, Grok, DeepSeek, Llama, these types of things. We're starting to see the introduction of AI agents, where these kind of narrow AIs can do stuff for us on our behalf. They can send messages, they can do marketing, they can do all of these things for us. What we really need to work on right now in this kind of in-between phase between regular just kind of narrow AI and AGI or artificial general intelligence is ethical and aligned AI. We want to make sure these algorithms are aligned with our values. So early AGI is when we have human-like competence, meaning when AI is starts to get as good at humans at, at all work. And then we have advanced AGI, which means it's superior. It's a more advanced. It's like the best expert in the world at everything. And then, of course, we move to superintelligence, or SGI. And superintelligence is when AI is superior to all humans at all things. And that's really when we're going to hit the singularity. AI agents, if you're not familiar, this is the new new. You can go on uh, a ChatGPT operator, and you can do this. They can act autonomously, and they perceive, reason, and act on your behalf. You can give it a set of tasks, and it will do those tasks for you. By 2030, data centers alone will use 8 to 10% of all the electricity on the planet. Right now, they use about 3%. So in the next five years, we're going to see an explosion of data centers. So the big companies, the, the Metas, the Googles, the Apples, they are all, like I mentioned yesterday, investing about a billion dollars a day for the next foreseeable future for this AI arms race. Worldwide energy is still being powered by natural resources, by coal, gas, oil. Uh, the interesting thing, in 2024, we have about 15% of all the power in the world by renewables. We need to really kind of increase this dramatically in order to hit our targets of clean energy around the world and reverse this climate change that we've been experiencing. Nuclear power is coming. All the big companies, Google, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Meta, they all are investing in nuclear power. 
And the interesting thing is fusion is not far behind that. So we're going to have fusion reactors. They just recently in China did a fusion reaction for 17 seconds stable fusion. It's like creating a new sun. And fusion generates nearly 4 million times more energy than burning coal and oil. So what do these superpowers unlock for us? How about service robots? Right now we have robots that vacuum our house, we have robots that maybe cut our grass, but what about robots that can do almost any human task? They can take our deliveries around, they can drop things off for us, they can probably do our dishes and our laundry. Fantastic, I want a service robot that does backflips, obviously. How about material science? Being able to leverage AI to find new materials like room uh, temperature semiconductors. Imagine if we can have quantum computing in the millions of qubits, and also imagine if your phone, we, we could find new materials that your phone battery would last a month instead of 24 hours. You know, new materials are going to be dis discovered and defined by AI. Protein folding, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. In the last two months, we have folded all the proteins in the human body, all of them. We figured out every single combination that was alpha fold that did that, and they did it in two weeks. What would have taken humans 500 years was done in two weeks, and it's incredible. How about longevity? Who doesn't want to spend time with their great-grandchildren? I mean, that's what we're talking about, staying healthy and living longer, but it's not just about living longer, it's about being preventative and predictive with our medicine so that we have healthier, longer lives, not just live longer. And of course, space exploration. We're going to be able to mine asteroids and take some of the most carbon-rich manufacturing in the world off our planet and put it into space on the moon so that we don't have carbon built up here. And this is the SpaceX rocket landing after being shot into space. This is a new moment in human history. What about vertical farming? You know, sustainable vertical farming will allow us to have fresh produce grown locally. And if you look carefully, the AI has given this woman an extra hand. So AI can create an extra hand for you. How about personalized learning? AI tutors have the ability to unlock the full potential of humanity for everyone everywhere. This is an enormous possibility for us, and I'm working on this. So how do we prepare for this massive change? Education is the key to unlock the golden door of freedom. This was George Washington Carver, and he was a pioneer in sustainable agriculture in the 1900s. Unlimited Awesome is our answer to this. Unlimited Awesome is an education system that's based on success principles and also a student accelerator for student ideas. And so we want to harness the world's ideas. But before I tell you about Unlimited Awesome, I want to tell you just a little bit of how we got to where we are and why we're uniquely positioned to bring this education system to the world. So in 2010, we invented touchscreen technology for the music industry. This is a world first, and we invented this back before the iPad came out. So you can imagine. We worked with Linkin Park, Infected Mushroom, Morgan Page. We had this at uh, festivals like Coachella and EDC and Ultrafest. We also worked with Hyundai and Heineken and Microsoft. This was an incredible moment in time, and it allowed me to try VR for the first time around that time. And the thing is, my daughter also became an entrepreneur around on that the exact time. Line, an idea was born, and the entrepreneur in this girl from Mississauga was ignited. My name is Abby, and I'm a 10-year-old inventor and entrepreneur. I have a passion for fashion. This is the Love Sandal Princess Collection flat. A young entrepreneur, her name is uh, Abby Smithson. It's actually a real company, and I have an actual product. So how old are you? I'm 10. 10. 10 years old, an entrepreneur at 10 years old. So. That was what my daughter was doing. So she sold 3,000 pairs of shoes before high school. <laughs> Thank you. So we figured if we can teach one kid entrepreneurship, why can't we do this at a global scale? And we built a company called Metaverse before the hype wave of the Metaverse. We actually created that hype wave. And since 2014, we've built over 200 projects for some of the biggest companies in the world. Companies like Siemens, Samsung, MasterCard, Wipro, uh, Hilti. Uh, all of these big companies, we did training, marketing, retail, but we did it in three dimensions. And so we've built a platform for the spatial web or the 3D internet. And so we've been building that for the last 10 years. And so this is the platform by which we're going to have a virtual campus for Unlimited Awesome so people can meet as avatars and go experience the virtual world of innovation together from anywhere on earth on any device. By one estimate, 65% of grade one children will end up working in jobs that don't yet exist. And yet, 
In an age of instant information, we are still teaching our children in the same classrooms we did 100 years ago. Here are classrooms in America, India, China, Canada. Hasn't changed in 100 years. And if you don't believe me, here's a classroom from the 1800s. It's basically a one-size-fits-all system. Every student takes the same classes, takes the same tests. They're all graded the same way. We have literally created an assembly line from kindergarten right through to university. So how then do we create a system that enables creativity while reinforcing the success mindsets at a global scale? So that TED Talk was six years ago now, and I'm really proud that it, stand, it stood up because in one of their, I predicted that everybody's talking about, oh, we're going to teach people how to code. And I said, well, what happens when code starts to code itself, which we're already seeing now? So what if race, sex, economics, and geography were no longer part of getting a quality education? Closing gender, geographic, and socioeconomic gaps in innovation and entrepreneurship will add over $5 trillion to the global economy, according to the World Economic Forum. We have built a solution for a post-AI world. It's called Unlimited Awesome, and it'll be rolling out this year in schools and all over the world as a private platform. So it is with great pleasure to introduce Unlimited Awesome, which is an AI mentor that can guide you through life, that learns from you, but we never sell your data. It is an unlimited campus. It's a gamified virtual campus, which is why we built our own game engine to deliver this without having to go through the app stores. And the last thing, and most important, it is a fund to help fund and grow student startups around the world, kind of like Y Combinator for the world's ideas. We have a new curriculum for a new world. Perseverance, exercise, gratitude, positivity, deep breathing, creative problem solving, economic responsibility, financial literacy, teamwork, mentorship, respect, negotiations, social impact, ethics, empathy, environmental sustainability. We need all of these things to be taught, and they're not taught in schools right now. We have over 130 mentors and backers, including the founder of Atari and uh, Chuck E. Cheese, Nolan Bushnell. Uh, Leslie Shannon, the head of trends and innovation at Nokia. Tom Furness, the grandfather of virtual reality. Tala Al Ansari, the head of technology for the Dubai uh, 2020 event. Tim Hill, the former commanding officer of the US Navy's training system. We have Valerie Fox, former head of the DMZ, the largest and most uh, successful accelerator for universities. And we have Tim Bates, the, the godfather of tech. So the golden age of investing requires bold investments in AI, robotics, clean energy, longevity, data centers, and most importantly, preparing next generations to thrive in 2025 and beyond. When we invest, we don't just create wealth, we shape the future of civilization. Join us in this mission. Let's build the future we want together. Thank you very much, everybody. My name is Alan Smithson.